why can't we all just be happy and love each other? Why can't? Why does there have to be anger involved? Hello, welcome to the pod. <laughs> welcome to the podcast. We are back after long, long time no see. Long time. Are you still looking out for the Virgin Hunters? <laughs> They're still yeah. hunting you down. We've let ourselves down. We've let Shut up. Right, what are we talking <laughs> about today? Well, we'll start with the, the, the Astro Twin Jiggies and we'll go on to Astro Style because Google thinks that's the... Oh, I don't like these cookies. Cookies. I've got... We're going to start with cookies. The horoscopes are going to be happiness lies in a cookie. Like... <laughs> Ah, Happiness lies in a sugary treat today as your (laughs) fifth house is full of sweets. Well, I've got the post-it note for what all the houses mean, so we can add to that. We've got Gemini or Pisces. What do we want to go for first? Let's do Pisces first. There's a lot less on these ones. Astro Style keeps it nice and short. The harder you try to stay focused on the task at hand today, Pisces, the more distracted you'll become. Blame it on an amorous Libra moon in your lusty eighth house. My okay. what? Is that where all the kinkiness happens? In my eighth house in Amsterdam. In Amsterdam, that's yeah. No, that's the high house in Amsterdam. Um, it's a, where did I get it's a mixture of everything in Amsterdam. I suppose yeah. The, the red lighthouse in Amsterdam. Yeah. If you're in a new relationship, you might be drowning in oxytoxin. The love chemical that acts like emotional gorilla glue. Do your level best to keep your mind on your work, concentrating on one tiny aspect at a time so you don't mentally derail. That was a letdown. That was hella disappointing. Is that it? Oh my god. That was it. No, this is a completely different one. Oh no, it's it's, it's pretty much the same thing, just written slightly different. Should we okay. compare and contrast? Let's compare. Oh. The more you try to zero in on that work that's in front of you today, the less you will be able to focus on it. Chalk it up to the flirtatious Libra moon in your libidinous eighth house all day. Wait a oh. minute. In a new relationship, you could feel super glued to your sweetie thanks, thanks to oxytoxin, <gasps> the cuddle chemical. It's not the love oh. chemical anymore, it's the cuddle <laughs> oh, chemical. Oh, that's quite cute. Sweetie? Yeah. Like, sh- like cookies? <gasps> the Astro Twins are calling you sweetie. No, they're calling whoever I'm with sweetie. Keep trying to concentrate on the task at hand it may help to narrow your lens one small step at a time so you don't swerve back into the daydreaming lane i can't promise anything (laughs) (laughs) well will we start with mine on the l one flirt alert what not exactly (laughs) flirt just flirt alert okay not exactly a rare occurrence for playful twins but with today's engaging Libra moon engracing your amorous fifth house. Okay. Notes, okay. <laughs> Where's your fifth house? Paris. Paris. Amorous romantic. Oh. oh, a light will go out in your <laughs> eighth house. <laughs> but with today's engaging Libra moon gracing your amorous fifth house, you might feel you might be feeling extra impish. Use your galactic hall pass to switch into seduction mode tonight oh. at the dating scene of your choice. If you're unattached. <laughs> well, now you need to go on a date tonight. Coupled, cu- coupled Geminis can keep the sexual tension simmering throughout the day with naughty texts. I don't need to know that. Then when you finally rendezvous, turn the temperature up with risky banter until you both reach the boiling point. The, the Astro Twins are in some mood today. The fact that they're sisters and they write these things together. It's quite weird. Like, I think these people are horny today. Let's write about how horny <laughs> they are. Imagine their husbands, re- assuming they have husbands, imagine or their, their partners mm. reading that. Like, are, are, you not, are you not happy? Are you not fulfilled? You just, just tell me. Like, I don't need to find out through your <laughs> predictions. So what, what does it say on the, the astro style one? With today's flirtatious Libra moon heating up your passionate fifth house so it's amorous so it's and passionate, passionate it's hot and steamy Ooh. you may be feeling a little frisky go ahead jim you've got the cosmic permission to let your seductive seductive and impish side play out single plan to stay out a little later than usual on a school night in a relationship get both of you a little worked up by sending seductive messages throughout the day when you do meet up dial up the sexy banter Holding, no holding back. So it is 
just the same. It's just the same, both different wording. I think one person must write it, then the other person just like switches the words about yeah. so it seems like it's different, but it's the same thing. It seems like a very lusty um, horoscope today, so I'm wondering how Capricorn Christmas is feeling. Should we find out? Well, he does have the agreeable Libra moon sailing through the top of his chart, revving up his 10th house of career ambition. 10th we are house. Flying through these things. <laughs> All the houses are getting a mention. We should do like a an episode where we like just buy a globe and start drawing all the houses on the different parts of the world. There's like Pinterest boards for how we design the houses. Oh my god, yes. How's, what's the lusty house going to look like? It, red lights everywhere. A swing in the corner, don't ask questions. 10th house, career ambition. Career ambition. Career ambition. New what York. I was going to say New York. Or we? LA. <laughs> we could just like get a job and immediately go on strike. We'll just join all the famous actors and writers. And meet them and network at the strike. Um, <coughs> God, Are cough, you, cough. You're still coughing. You said you were fine. You lied to me. Well, I, like, I felt fine yesterday and I wasn't really coughing and now I am. We said goodbye. I coughed. I got on the train home and did not cough once for the rest of the night. Because <laughs> you didn't think. talk for the rest of the night. We're both just dying today, I think. Yeah, it's going to get worse for you. Hopefully not, but... You know what's done it, though? Barbie. We went to Comic Con we on Friday. Guess what we saw and found and smelled and God. reveled in. <laughs> what were you, you said something as soon as we walked into the place? It was something like you can just smell the virginity. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, mmm. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad people didn't hear me. You would get a plastic sword to the heart if that happened. Oh my God! The lightsabers they were everywhere. The, light, the lightsabers were cool. There was nothing really there for us. No, what did we expect? I don't know. We didn't even see any of the celebrities. No, because it was like in a booth that we couldn't even see. So we went to Comic-Con. We went to Comic-Con. Um, then we went to Cafe Nero. Yeah, and we booked Barbie. We had such a good view of so many shenanigans. And there was a, a misogynist taxi driver who said, Do you know one of my pet hates? Lady drivers. <laughs> I was just kind of sitting there silent for the whole ride. Do I even need to be here at this point? I could literally fall out the car and you use both wouldn't notice. <sighs> well, I wouldn't notice. I was so engrossed in the conversation. Yeah, I didn't want to interrupt your date, so I didn't say anything. <laughs> his friend kept getting points in his license, so he'd put on his wife's license. Like, the way he was talking about her is like, she was brain dead. Just completely gaslighting her. You're a shit driver, honey, by the way. You know this. <laughs> <laughs> there, there. You're an alcoholic, darling. I haven't <laughs> drank in 20 years. You're an alcoholic, that's why. You need to go to rehab, sweetheart. You need to let me marry a hotter, younger woman. Who I'll meet in a taxi. <laughs> and it was me. We went to see Barbie, which was the second day in the row for you, though. I liked it the second time. I got Who? more of the meaning of the ending of the film. Barbie. We went to go and see Barbie. That's right. The coughing is just a cover for all the emotions we're feeling inside. The fact that it's got a six point a six point a seven point six on IMDB and Oppenheimer's got an eight point eight. I said to you that I think that's because people knew what they're getting with Oppenheimer. I was kinda prepared going in because I was like reading about it and listening to interviews about it and they were all saying like it's not what you expect. I went in expecting to like one hundred percent relate to Ken <laughs> in the film. And I kinda <sighs> did for a minute. So what what I've got? I'm gonna look through some of these reviews. They've got Creative, but preachy and confusing. Preachy. I hate stereotyping people, men included. And it's like all men ride horses and have fragile egos and drink brewski beers. That's not what the That's film is saying. That's not anything to do with what the film is about. For God, goodness sake, if I had a dollar for every time the movie said patriarchy, I'd be so rich. Funny thing is, it's like the film industry, the most patriarchy industry yeah, in the world and barbie it's really like called the, them out on it literally me <laughs> speaking of literally me i need to take my headphones off for a second oh no i'm dressed as is ryan gosling today in the dance scene 
I mean, I was listening to the I'm Just Ken song again and like looking at the lyrics. I Same. I might have caught myself singing along at one point. It's such a good song. <laughs> so good. He's just Ken. Anywhere else he'd be a 10. All his life he's been polite. <laughs> Put your manly hand in mine. I've just noticed something here. It says lastly, but it's in the middle of the, pa the paragraph. So it's definitely not lastly. They're just ranting. Like, oh, no, one more thing. I really hate it when movies try to empower women by dumping down the men. The thing is, like, there <laughs> are moments like that, but it all, like, wraps up in the end quite well because Barbie apologises to Ken. Yeah, I can't remember. This is, oh, what? Things don't need to all go back to the way they were. Uh -huh. Does that mean they're going to go, like, into equality land or something <laughs> now? <laughs> maybe. Barbie, Barbie and, and Ken, Ken land. land. <laughs> I was going to say maybe there will be a Ken land, but they already made a Kendom and it went so wrong. Horses and brusky beers. <laughs> In the uh, Mojo Dojo Casa House Casa or something. House. I looked that up to see if it was an actual toy. It, I don't think it is. Did you feel the Kenergy when you were watching it? Can you feel the Kenergy? It was so cool. <laughs> Very campy and what's better than this? Just guys being dudes. I bet Ben Shapiro hated that. Absolutely. Did you see he made a video about it? Like... A video. Oh, I think video. he showed me the, the picture of him standing next to the poster and he looks like Ken. <laughs> He's cosplaying as Ken. But he made a video <laughs> where it was like, the title of it was called Destroying Barbie for like 43 minutes or something. And it starts off with him putting Barbies in the bin and lighting the bin on fire. Why? Because he's a psychopath. He's the most insecure he's, of all the, he's weird, the toxic men. He's insecure Barbie. Depression Barbie. Depression Barbie. <laughs> I, I honestly think it's going to be like required reading for a lot of things. I think everyone should watch. Everyone should watch it. It's not a film for everyone, but everyone should watch it. It's important to see. I think you should. If you don't understand it the first time, I think you should watch it a lot of times <laughs> to fully understand. I think I'm kind of at the point where I think I should watch it again. I'm probably not like emotionally recovered, oh. yet, but I need to watch it again. It will make you think for like a few days. <laughs> think about life. Yeah. Am I kind of? One of my favorite characters was Alan. There's only one Alan. I there is only one Alan, but he's not even in it that much. I know. Which is baffling. But he he's like, stole the scene every time he was. <laughs> I know. It was almost like he's he was designed as like the comic relief character, and then he realised actually pretty much everyone in this film has their moments of being quite funny. The sugar daddy, Ken. Rob Brydon. Mm -hmm. Is Rob Brydon the Rob sugar Bryden's daddy? Rob Brydon's the sugar daddy. <laughs> he's not a sugar daddy. He's got a dog called Sugar. I'm a da <laughs> yeah, and I'm and his he's daddy. the daddy. <laughs> but look, the reason the magic earring, Ken, was like, I think banned or not banned like discontinued, discontinued is because it was the gay ear to have the earring and like oh no 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 we can't be that inclusive we can't let let people have this skipper skipper <laughs> oh, yeah i'm tempted to see how much a skipper barbie doll costs top 14 most controversial barbies ever let's go through them pregnant midge this is the one i saw what on earth is that so, oh there's growing up skipper that's what she was called barbie forever and tanner the dog it can't have been discontinued particularly quickly. You had one. My little sister had one. Actually, I'm going to read this because it might even be that not because it's just a weird thing to have, like, a toy dog that eats then shits, but what is eating and shitting is the same thing. No, I was I was going to say, there you go, that's what it says, it's a choking hazard. Uh. The, the kids get to a point where, like, if the dog likes it so much, <laughs> maybe I will like it maybe too. Maybe I'll put it out later. <laughs> <laughs> And eat it <laughs> oh no, don't do that. Oh, there's a tramp stamp Barbie. Oh my it's god. It's got Ken. Ken in a love heart. <laughs> Mexican Barbie. Mexican Barbie. She's got a fiesta dress and a chihuahua. Was it? More stereotypical than authentic. Well, I mean... Uh, I don't know. I'm, I mean, chihuahuas come from Mexico. I mean, it's gonna, they're gonna, if it's Barbies of the world, they're going to do... Everything stereotypical. If it was Barbies yeah. of Scotland, they'd be like they'd be wearing in a kilt. Uh -huh. uh, and ginger hair. Redhead, yeah. <laughs> what have we got? Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Issue Barbie. What's wrong with this? Didn't Barbie Is begin? Is it because it's subjectifying? Like, that's what they're saying. That, the that was the first Barbie. The first was swimsuit. a swim outfit. I'm confused. Yeah, like the first commercially produced one. Yeah. Because I think the way it started was What's Her Face just made them herself for her daughter. And eventually some man with power came along and said, I'm going to make lots of money off of you. Wasn't it her husband? It might, I think you're actually right, yeah. <laughs> I think they started His husband's like, it. you do your stupid doll shit. Then actually realised it could 
He could exploit it. I'll be the businessman. I, it's not really a theory, but remember I was like um, pointing out in the trailer the four ghettos. Yeah, they the look brats like the brats. Thing. One of the brats is called Sasha, and so is that girl. Oh. And when she gets into the car, mum's like, hi, bunny boo boo. And she's like, don't call me that. That was Sasha's nickname in the Bratz. Oh, the suing is going to start again. Apart from it's going to be Bratz against Barbie this time. Right, I'm going to read all of this just because I've decided. I really enjoyed the first 20 minutes of the movie. It was very upbeat, positive and light. However, things soon became ne negative about 20 or 25 minutes into the disequilibrium. The narrative has to switch pace because narratives do not keep, stay constant, otherwise they become boring. That's when it starts to become dark. That's oh, funny. weird. Funny that. I can't... Hmm. <laughs> and this is the IMDb movie guy, so he knows about movies. <laughs> Clearly not. I couldn't stand it. Barbie's world and attitude was a constant bummer. Ken's attitude was sour. For the next hour and more, the movie just that lived rhymed. in negativity. What? Sour, hour, and war. <laughs> He's not a film guy. He's a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw it the day before the official opening day. Ooh. Ooh, he's a fancy movie guy. And I was playing the music Dua Lipa song almost every day. Which one's that one? The one they're all dancing to at the beginning. Hmm, I can't remember that one. I can remember the, the Lizzo one, the pink one. <laughs> that's, that's been Lizzo, stuck in my yeah. head for like a full I don't, day. I don't like Lizzo, but that song cannot <laughs> come out of my head. It's, it's a bop. There. I was really excited for this movie. I was looking forward to something very positive, but the vast majority of the movie was the conflict. Was the conflict part of writing? It was just too much. The movie didn't need to go that far that fast. I would pretend I would have preferred a more shallow and fun Barbie movie versus this Barbie movie filled with over an hour of conflict. Well, that just tells you the marketing team was... On Spot point. on. I like everyone actually getting annoyed. <laughs> or I'm getting annoyed at this point. I feel like watching <laughs> and reacting to like reviews that are bad for Barbie. Call them out on everything. It needs to happen. Right, hold on. <laughs> Hi, let me pause Opinion, right there. You're wrong. <laughs> I think you're lying about being ill. You've not coughed once. I'm not saying I'm coughing. My throat is just <laughs> sore. <laughs> you're the well, one I'll, that's I'll tell, I'll, coughing. I'll tell you now. It develops into a cough as time goes on. <coughs> I'm so sorry for everyone that <laughs> probably had to skip through all of this because we've spoiled the film. Yeah, I think there will be points where we've spoiled it. Just know um, you need to go and see it. That's basically what we're trying yeah. to say. Gee, that was fun talking about Barbie. What are we going to talk about now? Wow. So now that we've finished talking about Barbie and totally not something completely unrelated and not in the podcast. Oh, we do a little quick quick bit of uh, what happened all those years ago in a town called Glastonbury. <laughs> all those weeks and years ago. When was Glastonbury, first of all? Like, it was in June. June? Um, you said something about Rick Astley. I, I'm not interested in Rick Astley stuff. Like, the only song I know is Never Gonna Give You Up, and I've heard it, like, a million times. Yeah. He kept it till the never end. Gonna do, never Gonna Give You Up. Did he, like, Rick Roll people? He's, like, walking off stage. Then it goes... <laughs> it plays a completely different song. He plays the Harry Styles song he sang. Which they, they all probably knew it anyway, but they thought it was something else. He was kind of dressed um, up like Harry Styles as well. His big pink was, suit. Oh, it was a pink suit for the his set and a blue suit for the Smith set. Right. And he had his hair up like Morrissey. It was fantastic. I didn't he, see he, any of that. <laughs> well, he plays the two songs that you like. So, you okay, so I need to watch it now. Favourite favorite line. He's like saying to the audience, if it's all right, me and the boys are going to go find something to drink. And then he walks to, like, to the drum set, picks up a, a can, can of red stripe, camera cuts to the guitarist, getting a bottle of Jaeger out and pouring it into five cups. <laughs> oh my cups. god. Did you see the confusion on Rick Assey's face when he's got a red stripe and a Jaeger? I've written written down the quote. I was thinking we'd just have a beer and Tom's brought out the Jaeger. Oh fuck. He would be a good concert to go to if he just gets drunk on stage. <laughs> what more do you want? Do you want Kate Blanchett dancing to Sparks? I didn't I didn't need that. I've only ever seen them on Top of the Pops sometimes. Debbie Harry's not dead. 
I was surprised by that. She's still going. Um, Elton John, I think, is dead. He's been reanimated <laughs> just for Glastonbury. That was one of his last shows, though, I think. It was like a Weekend at Bernie situation with Elton John. He was like, the way, like, <laughs> oh see God. the way he was actually walking? He walked onto stage and was like... <laughs> he's not He's still standing. He's really not. Poor Elton. <laughs> are we moving on to something else? Uh, are we doing... Let's the Hunger do Games. In the Hunger Games and then an intro. I've used the notes you've put in to the doc. Okay. First of all, we've got Timothy Shalamander. Mm -hmm. We've got Kanye West. We've got Gal Gadot. We've got Kardashian 1, Kardashian 2, and Kardashian 3, Brendan Fraser. She has to win. And Daffy Duck. We've got Rick Astley. We've got Jennifer Lawrence. There's Pedro Pouting. There's Elizabeth the Bicky. The two iconics. Oh no. If oh. I have to kill Pedro, I can't do it. So, Hunger Games Simulator Start, Kardash Bloodbath, Kardashian 3, Steps on a Landmine. No. The two iconics severely injures Kardashian oh, 2. Oh, God. Puts her out of her misery. We've killed Kardashian. <laughs> killed Kardashian 2. Timothy Shalamander, Rick Astley, Elizabeth Debicki Lovehart, and Kanye West share everything they gathered before running. Oh, so they're a wee team. Jennifer Lawrence grabs a backpack and retreats. She's done this before. <laughs> Brendan Fraser clutches a first aid kit and runs away. Gal Gadot, Pedro... And Kardashian one get into a fight. Gal Gadot oh, no. kills both. Gal Gadot <gasps> killed Pedro. I hate her so much. Kanye collects fruit from a tree. Brendan Fraser <laughs> begs the two iconics to kill him. They refuse keeping him alive. Do <laughs> we don't kill him, we keep him alive. Oh my god, thank god. They refuse. <laughs> Gal Gadot is pricked by thorns while picking berries, serves you right. Elizabeth the Bicky attacks Rick Astley, no. but he manages to escape. Jennifer Lawrence sets off an explosive, killing Timothy Shalamander. <gasps> He's dead. Brendan Fraser <laughs> convinces the two iconics to snuggle with him. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Rick Astley and Jennifer Lawrence fight Kanye West and Gal Gadot <laughs> and Jennifer Lawrence. Wait, what? And Jennifer Lawrence survive. I, I think they all fight and they all survive. I don't understand. So seven people are dead. The two Iconics <laughs> receive fresh food from an unknown sponsor. <gasps> <gasps> Who was it? I think it was Andrew Garfield. <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence silently snaps Rick Astley's neck. Brendan Fraser scares Eliz Elizabeth the Bicky off. Oh. Who could be scared of Brendan? Because he's a killing machine. Elizabeth the Bicky. I'm just going to call her Edie. She stays awake all night. Brendan Fraser attempts to start a fire. But is unsuccessful. Are we still with him at this point? No, because we are with Jennifer Lawrence and we sleep in shifts. Brendan Fraser got jealous of us. <gasps> he set Jennifer Lawrence on fire with a Molotov cocktail. Oh my god. It's because we, we slept in shifts with her and not him. <laughs> we have just set off an explosive, killing Brendan Fraser. Oh my god. I can't believe this has happened. Elizabeth the Bicky is unable to convince the two Iconics not to kill her. God. One cannon can be heard in the distance. Elizabeth the Bicky has died this round. The games have ended. Did we just win the Hunger Games? <laughs> we won. I'm so sorry, Brendan. This was actually surprisingly fun. I didn't think this would be that good. Loved killing people. I think we should do that again at some point. This is the outro. Thank you for watching. Thanks so much for watching the Two Iconics Podcast Guy. <coughs> <coughs>coming soon the one iconic, the one iconic. <laughs> having too much fun we're supposed to be doing an outro we're not supposed to get on this well <laughs> I, uh, I hate you i hate you too keep a plectrum who's someone from the hunger games gail or peter, gail, or I don't peter. Even know. <laughs> gail can be the turtle it was up you're gail i'm peter subscribe leave a comment and Ow. why do you do these things i just don't understand <laughs> <laughs> You love me, really. Smash that like button and goodbye. <laughs> and goodbye. I'm just Ken. Anywhere else I'd be a ten. My name's da, Ken. Da, so da, am da, I. Da, 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 da. Fuck.